All right, guys, who's ready to learn some new stuff about RPR? Yeah. That's a pretty positive response. All right, Veronica, let's go. So how many of you are ready to learn more new cool things about RPR? Woo! Okay, great. Thank you, thank you. And I'm here to show you two great ways that you can use RPR in your business right away. So what I want to ask you first is this. Farming. How many of you have a farm area? I know it's kind of an old-fashioned kind of a term. A, I want you to know this. Snail mail is coming back. Google it, you'll see a few studies. Snail mail is coming back. So what I'm going to give you a case study of an agent in the San Francisco Bay Area who's using snail mail combined with RPR to build her farm area and build her business. So those of you that do have a farm area, are you consistently farming it? And a consistent farm action is 12, minimum 12 touches. Any of you touching your farm area 12 times a year? Good. How about touching your sphere of influence 12 times a year? Great. Those of you that aren't, we're going to show you some easy ways to do that with this building of a farm area. And those of you that are farming, we're going to give you some content that you're touching your sphere of influence 12 times a year. So we have here, um, you know, talk about targeting. A lot of times why working a farm area is difficult is because it takes consistency. Minimum 12 times a year, I just said. There was a rain, ex, a rain study. Rain is a sales training company. And they did a survey, and in that survey, only 66% of the folks that were surveyed are consistently farming with an action and a call to action to their farm area. It's hard. But you want to be the neighborhood expert. So Tran, Tran Dunlap, who's that Bay Area realtor, she has finely tuned RPR and is using the RPR tools to finely tune her farm area, be the neighborhood expert, build community. So you're hearing about that a lot now, building the community and being a part of the community. She's building a community in her, with her farm area. Why is it difficult? And why is so often the return on that investment of your efforts with your farm area so low? Is because you're probably not farming or sending out information that's appropriate to the area. So Tran goes into the RPR commercial side and pulls out some economic and demographic information. She does her research. She's also building value by providing great information on that community and the property. Because the consumer wants to know what's in it for them, right? Isn't that what they, how does my home fit into this picture that you're trying to paint for me? So what she does is she goes in, and I'm going to go over to this side, is she selects several different areas. You can select areas of just a condo complex, a style of home, or an area, you could select a school zone. And she goes in, she pulls this out on the commercial side of RPR, she looks at the number of homes, what's the 12 month change in value of those homes, the turnover rate, and the local amenities. And what she does for each of those individual farm areas is creates a simple landing page. She creates a simple landing page she has a lead capture on the landing page and says, give me your contact info and I'm going to send you community information and information on your home and where your home fits within the overall market. And keep in mind, there are several different RPR reports that you can use, neighborhood report, market statistics report, school reports, as part of these 12 touches. So then what she does, after she's created these individual landing pages, every month she sends out a four by six postcard. 
It's the most inexpensive way to do it. She sends out the postcard with the landing page info on it. They go to the landing page and she uses that lead capture and she says, again, give me your contact info and I will send you a report about your home. She'll send them a property report, maybe a neighborhood report. And every month she'll do something different. It could be a school report, it could be a market activity report. And she's now building that relationship with that farm area. And they are looking at her as the go-to market expert. One of the reasons RPR was created was because there were so many different websites out in the community, out in the world, that called themselves the market expert, the real estate industry expert. And in this room, we know that we're the real estate industry experts. I'm also a realtor. I don't practice now, but I do have a business partner who handles my book of business. So when I say we, I do include myself. So she is creating these reports, she emails them off, and she's creating and building that relationship with those in her farm area. Now the other thing is, is that she can't always be the person behind the, the curtain. You really do have to be out and about. Take your RPR app out and about with you in your farm area and start walking your farm area because what you're gonna be able to do is then start building that personal relationship, that nose to nose, toes to toes relationship that ultimately is what real estate is all about, that relationship business. But they always want to know what's in it for me, where does my house fit into the, the big picture, what can you tell me about the neighborhood. So with the RPR app, she's able to immediately pull up any property they ask about, when someone meets you for the first time, or they know you're in the business, what's the first question they ask you? How's the market? And what do you say? Great, awesome, unbelievable. But what if you were able to open up your RPR app and say, well, actually, in the area that we're in now, within a half mile or whatever radius that you set, there are 17 new properties on the market, 14 under agreement properties, 18 have sold in the last six months, and the median listing price is. How does that make you sound? Like the real estate industry professional that you are. In my area, that makes you sound wicked smart. <laughs> so, now, you're out there with your RPR app. She's then follows up, again, every month with a report. She sends out those, those four by six postcards and, she sends, and she's able to then, as I said, build that relationship. Now, if this sounds at all interesting to you, if you think that you can use it, if you can augment what you're already doing, go to rpr.me forward slash farm. Does it sound pretty easy once you get it set up? You're setting up for a condo complex, a school district, just set up a simple landing page. And she is building her business very quickly versus the traditional farming where you send out a random postcard that doesn't apply to everyone in that area. She can target market a specific school zone if she wants a condo complex. She can look up and target a specific area where the turnover meets the need that she's trying to address. Sound easy? Yes. Excellent. Any questions? I have a question. Yes. The post, so she's sending out a postcard, then she's getting back that individual contact information. So she creates the report and sends that off. So within the RPR reports, you can actually put in an email address and you can put in multiple email addresses. But remember, she's doing this on an individual customized basis, so it's not automated. You do. 
but you can have these reports already created and just grab them and send them, because those can stay on the left-hand side for 30 days. So you can renew those each month and just have them already created and send them. Yes, you can put multiple email addresses in. And it'll send a unique one to each and every person. Correct. And a unique content, a unique report will go, um, the re same report will go to each unique user address. Okay. Out with buyers. This is where the app comes in handy. The app is, comes in handy wherever you are all the time, but now you're out with your buyers. So. Here we have an agent who is out with her buyers. She's able to give them information right away when they have a question. How she does it, and she's setting up her buyer tours and working with new buyers, she can go in and actually tap on a travel time. So she can go in, select a location, because maybe the buyers that she's meeting with have said, we need to be within a half hour of my employment. So she'll go in, enter in the address of the employment, and she's then able to create a radius drive time of 30 minutes. Then tap that drive, tap that map, and bring up all the properties that are available there. She can do it for a school search. She can then create a buyer tour report and send it to them. So this is the travel time search. So you just do a travel time search, you're selecting the location, then all of the, um, the perimeter comes up, the boundaries of that tap travel time area come up, and she just taps within that search to pull up all the on-market properties, and from there, builds her buyer tour. Now, she wants, as I said, she can do it with the schools. All of our school data comes from a company called Niche, and they have all of the public schools in the country, and very soon they're going to be adding preschools as well. So you have all of that information. She can also send a report to the prospective buyer. Oh, you want it to be within this school zone? Here is a school report on that, in that zone. Here's a report on that school. And here are some properties within that school zone that you may be interested in. This is all in preparation for setting up that buyer tour. Because we know that the buyers so often come with us, come to us, and they've already picked out, oh, I want to see this property, this property, and this property, because they saw it on ABC website, and that property is already under agreement, or the property is already sold. Am I right? Does that happen? So now, you're able to, again, reinforce the fact that you have all of the updated current information on properties at your fingertips. She then creates her buyer tour report. So you can go into RPR, select the properties that you want to go to, and put it into a report side by side for that client to have in their hand as you're going through these properties. You'll also have those properties for yourself, and you can click and look at comps. So say you're at property number three, they like it, they want to look at some comps because maybe they want to have a quick CMA right then and there, and maybe they want to start submitting an offer. So way, again, the way the comp analysis works is, the first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna tap, number one, you click on comp analysis, it's right on the property, and the wizard brings you right through and you'll select, look at those comparable sales, select the ones you want, you have a side-by-side -side comparison, and you can then make adjustments right on your phone to get a range, add your knowledge of the market, because you are the real estate industry expert, you know, what's going on in the area. You know our business is coming into the area that's gonna create a higher demand for properties. Our business is leaving the area. Am I right? You know those things versus the random websites. Then as you are walked through the wizard, you'll then be able to create that CMA and send it to them right then and there. And that'll give you a great start. 
If you want to learn more about how she is able to work with the buyers, create that trust, create that knowledge, that respect of her knowledge, go to rpr.me forward slash buyers. rpr.me forward slash buyers. So the question is, is there a limit on the number of comps that you can select? I've selected up to six or seven and not been shut off. I don't know the exact number, to be honest with you, but I've done about six or seven. Usually six or seven will give me an adequate number of comps. Yeah. So now, to get a preview of all the reports that you can create in RPR, text NAR. RPR to 555-888. Text NARRPR to 555-888. If you haven't seen all of the reports that RPR can create for you, you're missing out. Because not only can these reports be used, as we talked about today, with buyers out on tour for your farm area, all of our reports can be shared to Facebook from the desktop. So if you, we have a listing flyer that you can create. Very beautiful, has ample, opportunity, ample space for photo, great remarks, um, information about the property. So you could create a flyer for your new property, share that to Facebook. From the app, it can be texted, it can be tweeted. You can share it to Instagram. So create it on the desktop. You have your phone out, and there's your Instagram. Because as if we're looking at building that farm area, and you're gathering that contact information, that lead capture, and you're creating your different lists for marketing, wouldn't it be great to put out for Instagram, hey, in that particular farm area to that particular list, here's my new listing, here's the listing sheet, having an open house on this weekend, come on by. We, we also have neighborhood reports, and I referenced those in the farm area. The neighborhood reports have economic, demographic, quality of life, and market statistics. And those are four different sections. So those are four sections that you can create separately as one of your 12 touches. And you can print these out, or you can email them. And as I said, share them via text, Instagram, or a tweet from the app. The other thing, I don't have the slide for it, but go into Facebook and like our RPR Connect Facebook page. RPR Connect. And in RPR Connect, you're going to get the opportunity to hear from over 20, almost 20,000 agents. I don't think we've passed 20,000, but we're right about 20,000 um, realtors that like RPR Connect. And you're going to be able to hear about how they're using it in their area. And you can learn from each other. So RPR Connect on Facebook. I have a minute for one more question. Yes. Yes, the, qu the question is, can you change? That's great. She's not a plant. I didn't, this, I'm so glad you mentioned that. So branding, if, you're a, if you would like, your broker, owner, or manager has to do this. There is no charge, no charge for anything I've talked about and all the information I haven't talked about. But you can, your broker owner can brand RPR to the company. So the company name, logo, and color can appear on the website, on the mobile app, and all of the reports that you create. In addition to that, you as an agent, once your broker owner has branded and enrolled in the broker tool set, you as an agent can include five PDFs of information that you would like to have in your report, whatever it is that you would like, and your broker owner manager 
can include five PDFs as well. So for example, if your company has a great absorption rate, wouldn't that be a nice piece of data to bring with you out on a listing appointment, that your company has a great absorption rate within the community? I thank you all for your attention. The rest of the afternoon is going to be a wonderful afternoon. We'll get a whole bunch more of information, and have a great day.